Hello and welcome to my talk, Mindfulness and Meditation, Self-Care and Being Digital in the Arts. I am super excited to share ideas on how learning from mindfulness and meditation may support art students to grow and learn, even in digital settings. I am Dorothee King. I'm the head of the Arts and Design Education Institute at the University for Arts and Design in Basel, Switzerland. Also, I am an organization and personal development specialist in the cultural sector. Since 2000, I've been working in the US, Canada and Europe as a coach, educator and communicator for museums, art institutions and academia. I'm also a certified life coach, playing big facilitator and meditation teacher, as you will notice in my suggestions today. The goal of my work is the well-being of students as well as their teaching teams. I focus on the question of how to experience well-being in diverse working and learning spaces on-site and digital. Thereby, I seek to strengthen individual skills and approaches to learning. Let's make space for out-of-the-box constellations for everybody. Why we should discuss creativity in online or digital learning. Maybe you feel like most of all art students. Do you feel drained from all the digital input you are supposed to deliver and all the digital output of others you consume? How does this affect your own creativity? In these digital times, do you also ask yourself how to deliver content, catch up with everyone, motivate yourselves, inspire others, stay creative, stay on track, stimulate discussion, be high level intellectual and deliver artistic excellence all at the same time online? Wow, I know, that's a lot. In the last years, I taught graduate courses called Mindfulness and Meditation, Self-Care and Being Digital in the Arts. We studied self-care methods, we learned ways to strengthen ourselves energetically, we identified, we identified the changes we individually want to see in this world, aka what to focus on and what to let go of. We expanded digitally, but only in directions we actually wanted to grow, all with the question, how to stay sane and healthy in the digital world as a creative human being. Today, I'm excited to share and contextualize with you the key points I identified during my graduate courses and the intense last years of digital teaching and learning in the creative environment of an art school. 1. Green up your life. 2. The healing power of a neutral space. 3. Do not miss the boredom. 4. Get still and listen deeply. 5. Get back into your body. Six, get inspired what brings you joy. And seven, connect to your bodies. Okay, let's start with one. Green up your life. It might sound counterintuitive, but to be more digital savvy, it helps to spend more time in the non-digital world. I know traveling to Boa Boa or other dreamy places was a difficult option in the past years and probably still is for most of us. Yet going outside changes our mood significantly. In a study conducted with 20,000 people at the European Center for Environment and Human Health at the University of Exeter, Matthew White and his team found out that human beings who spend two hours a week outside in a green environment, the minutes spaced out over the week or in one go, would report more likely mental well-being than those who did not go outside. This might not be thrilling news, yet it is a great reminder, especially now that we are stuck in an online conference again, to be happy and more productive in the digital world. We need space in the analog world of nature as well. As an example, at our institute, we do a lot of applied research in the field of promenadology, learning experiences while walking. Maybe taking my talk outside and listening to me as a podcast might be a good idea, so pause here and go outside. So the simple takeaway here is go outside regularly. And that brings me also to the second point that directly links to the first one, the healing power of a neutral space. 
we need more neutral spaces, spaces we do not judge and we are not judged in. Social media and the content, constant call to like or dislike what we are experiencing means stress for our social and internal well-being and might hinder our creative expression. In a study with young adults led by psychologists from the University of Austin, Texas and the University of Rochester, the researchers found out that being rejected or rejecting others as well as the crave for being liked causes stress. In the algorithms of either positive or negative reviews, we miss out the comfort of a neutral space. We need this unbiased time, time we might experience like when we are doing, I don't know, shopping, doing our dishes, brushing our teeth. We need those time when we don't feel judged, also in learning environments. But when we turn learning environments into social media spaces, spaces such as with Moodle or more contemporary options, we as users, aka learners, are constantly stopped to ask ourselves, do I like what I'm offered to do here? Do I like my fellow's comment? Do I like or not like my professor? Do you know ratemyprofessor.com, by the way? And those supposedly creative online learning environments that are designed to encourage us to post and comment on each other with the same parameters as social media, it is rather difficult to not start the stressful circle of judging and feeling judged. It is almost impossible to sink into a flow state of just doing for the sake of doing, which is so important for being creative. As an example here, we use a tool at school called Miro, Miro Boards, um, for shared collection of ideas and project development. For so far, it works pretty well. It's more of an adding than judging. Takeaway. It might be old school, but also personally, I'm a big fan of simple tools like text edit or notes or a good old notepad or when meeting digital, just simply use Zoom or other meeting tools. No fancy extra things, no likes or dislikes, no choices, no judging, no drama. Use tools that give you space to focus on what truly matters. And that's the content we want to study together. That brings me to the third point. Do not miss out on being bored. Do not miss the boredom. Point three. Boredom has a pretty bad reputation in a society where we try to turn study time into edutainment time and we are trying to be creative on an Instagram account and trying to get multiple digits of followers instead of creative results. In an experimental study with almost 200 students by Stanislav Shukailov from the University of Münster, Germany, it was discovered that problem solving was easier for students, actually, after a certain time they considered as boring. Encourage time. It's really important for contemplation and daydreaming because that can spur creativity. Already in 1977, Daniel Schubert found out that when we give enough time to come up with all obvious answers to problem-solving questions and then we give us a little more extra time on the side, we come up with more inventive answers, aka creative solutions to fend off the boredom. I might only speaking from my own teaching and learning experiences, but my personal urge to overload my teaching with digital tools, thematic inputs, pedagogical subtleties, exchange platforms, upload possibilities, videos, likes, dislikes, blah, 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 keeps us all very busy. But I have to be honest here, are the results that much better? No. <laughs> Example for my own school again, this is a hangout area the students built and designed themselves in their studio spaces. To match the architecture, I designed a weekly schedule with a lot of free time for nothingness to get them bored. As a takeaway for teachers and students, I invite you to keep it neutral, to focus on simple tools. I invite you to leave enough time and space to come up with unconventional solutions. As a teacher, do not insert videos, hashtags, like, dislike possibilities into your courses. The content you are talking about is truly enough. And as a student, delete most of your apps, put away the phone while studying and close your tabs. Allow yourself to get bored as if we are back in the 80s. Point number four might be a prerequisite to the previous point. What happens when we are bored? 
we get still, nothing happens, and all of the sudden, we hear things we haven't heard before. Be still and listen deeply. Trigger warning, here comes an inspirational Walmart quote, yet one that is still true. The Austrian pianist Alfred Brendel once said, the world listen contains the same letters as the world silent. Mm -hmm. Being silent is a rare find these times. Our digital friends and helpers could be constantly alerting us to click here and check there. This activity is called reacting and is the opposite of listening. It is difficult, I know, but possible to turn off all signal sounds and banners, get still, maybe even get bored and start to listen deeply. The practice of deep listening is to just listen, nothing else, to oneself or another person, maybe digital or in real life, nothing else. We listen in a silent process to observe and to learn. We listen without assumptions, without judgments, without wanting to speak back quickly in order to get rid of our pre-prepared answers. In an online world, we are conditioned to believe that fast and numerous reactions mean productivity. I dare to say that allowing ourselves to post less, think more and take time to listen makes more space to be creative. You are the boss of your attention span. You decide what to follow and what to unfollow. But how, to, how do we retrain our quick and reactive 1 million clicks per second digital muscles? By getting still. Here you see again an example from our school. Um, we had a student initiative called the 20 minute flight mode. There was a meditation session during Tuesday lunch break, 20 minutes of stillness. Uh, we first did on site and later online. As a takeaway for you here, try to meditate. Five minutes a day is enough to start with. And no, you do not need a meditation app to choose one from a thousand online or to scroll through YouTube and find the perfect meditative video or Palm Beach meditation background to sprinkle yourself with. No, just sit down, set a simple timer, calm down. Withdraw your senses from external stimulation. Focus on the pattern of your ingoing and outgoing breath. This is not an invention of mine, but the technique of Anapanasati, a method of the Buddha transmitted for thousands of years. Focusing on the breath, I know it's not easy and pretty boring, but you could make the practice easier for self by focusing on the area where the breath enters your body. So observe your upper lips, your nostrils, the inside of your nose. Observe how your breath feels, its length, its strength, its temperature. And do not control or judge your breath. If you observe your mind wandering off, just simply bring it back to your breath. Repeat daily, start with five minutes and find yourself refreshed with more focus and the ability to make relaxed and fruitful decisions towards a more creative than reactive online life. How about pausing this video here and trying it out right now and you can come back later. Okay. Now that I talked rather uh, negatively about the digital possibilities of our times, point number four, let us connect the physical with the digital. So number five, connect your body to the digital world. Sounds weird? We are already cyborgs with various digital physical attachments such as earplugs and smartwatches. Why not use our digital options for our own benefits? Our bodies are our vehicles to be in this world. According uh, to a study uh, by medical professional Hannah Steinberg, exercises always enhance creativity. But going digital often means that we treat our bodies as if swiping, typing and staring at our screens with tired eyes and frown brows are the only possible expressive modes our bodies are able to do. During the Corona crisis, one could observe that the number of health apps, fitness YouTube channels and news about online exercises increased drastically. That part of the lockdown made me very happy. Just look at the British initiative Run for Heroes, which got over 1 million people to run and raise funds for good causes at the same time. A simpler apps like Body to Brain, developed by the German physicist and coach Claudia Kross-Müller, that invites you to include simple and even secretly executed exercises into your daily life. 
how about we try some out now? So first one, let's throw away all your sorrows with each hand, one after the other. I'm sure that already makes you feel better. Or the other one is, let's sit spreading your legs wide open, crossing your arms behind your necks. Ah, you might not always want to do that in public, but at home in front of your screen, why not? And the last one, raise your head and smile. What a revolutionary thing to do, but it does work, doesn't it? Okay, so takeaway. How about ordering takeaway pizza instead of delivery next time? How about investing some time finding your favorite fitness app? How about connecting to others in your neighborhood to move more? And how about including tiny movements as we just did? You can do that even in your next online meeting. So listen to your body, do a body scan. What does my body need right now? Say things and give your body what she, he, they truly desire. Movement, good food, muscle building, or a nice bath. You could still be digital and listen to the podcast, to a podcast at the same time. Now that we are more connected to our bodies, and train to listen to our inner voices without judging, it is time to follow your own energy digitally. Number six, get inspired. What brings you joy? 4.6, I invite you to use the digital possibilities to your advantages. I might contradict earlier statements of myself in this short talk, yet I hereby ask you to enter the digital world full of awe and curiosity as what it is, an endless box filled with endless possibilities. In 1972, long before the internet, sports coach Timothy Galway wrote the book The Inner Game of Tennis, which quickly made its way into the coaching world, as we can learn a lot of things from Galway, not only about tennis. How about we enter a game, aka online experience, that sets the tone of the game? So how about hooking onto digital possibilities, not with fear of, ooh, bad digital world, but with awe and curiosity instead? And how about we focus not on our you, things we should do on the internet list, but on the options that are truly interesting to us? Also, and not in the sense of following links such as people who like this book also bought this book, but really trying to find the things that don't follow algorithms, but our own interests. So what do you want to find out? And just because. So, one part of our creativity is associations, sometimes also jumpy ones that only make sense to the creators that can't be seen by algorithms. So, reinvent your likes yourself. We do not have to follow the well-trodden path of the mainstream internet highways. There are 8 billion people on Earth. Follow inspirational sources that are maybe not liked by a million other people, but liked by you. Follow your curiosity, add a pinch of trust that all the gathered knowledge on the way will somehow make sense in your creative process. Here comes actually a failure example. We set up a shared online learning table with all BA, MA theses stored and other projects. The idea was to get inspired and make new associations for new projects. Unfortunately, this project failed. It is hard to reinvent ideas people in the Silicon Valley already had in a small art school. Okay, so the takeaway here, ask yourself in all your online activities, does it bring me energy or does it take energy away? Is it truly inspiring or do I just look at it because it was the next available click? Reduce all draining undertakings and focus on the things that give you joy and inspiration. Do not subordinate your digital actions to straight learning goals or career moves. When was the last time you looked at bizarre content just for fun? Start today. Free yourself from pressure, comparisons, or rules. Live your life also digitally. The last point completes point six. I invite you to use the digital world to connect with like-minded people. Find your buddies. I do not necessarily encourage you to install yet another echo chamber here. There are already too many out there, especially in the digital world. I rather make the point that staying connected or to having accountable buddies online might make a big difference in how you feel and how you get further along with your creative projects. Health researchers Colin Greaves and Lou Farbers found out in 2006 already that social activity, even online, makes us more creative and content. 
even though you're sitting at your desk or in front of your device all by yourself, you do not have to do everything your, uh, by your own. Sometimes it feels good to be in touch with people, even though you might not have the same opinions on everything. Connect with inspiring, nourishing beings. Share your creative path for a while. Example here, for a week all students from my art school offered various skills to share with each other, from dog training to pizza baking to VR coding. The initiative Share Your Brain was super social and brought together students who had never spoken a word with each other before. Takeaway here, ask yourself, what are the tools you like to use? With whom do you want to connect or stay connected? Which digital environments feel actually nourishing? Okay, let's sum up. What is the overall takeaway? How may we increase our creativity within a digital life? The first step is to spend a lot of time outside the digital world, in the green, to have more time and energy afterwards to make the right digital decisions. Stay away from social media tools of liking and disliking and make more time and space for non-judgmental, neutral activities and spaces. Do not be afraid of getting bored. Digital overstimulation is never the answer for being more creative. So refrain from overactivity and trust your own instincts instead. Maybe meditation is something for you. Connect to your body by using smart digital tools. And be radically honest with yourself and choose from the endless sites and options of the digital world and the internet, the ones that you bring you most joy. Don't do it all alone. Find your buddies to cheer each other on your creative and whatevers. And last but not least, laugh. Do not take everything too seriously digital or analog. Thanks for your time. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Thank you.